Right then guys, welcome to another episode of Hooked. My name's John Murray and I'm an angling addict and today you join me down on the banks of the River Derwent at Sutton. Uh, this is a deep water venue, renowned for its winter sport and uh, I've come with a sort of two rod approach today. I was going to fish the pool but the banks are absolutely horrible down here. Um, it's fairly dense with undergrowth behind me as well so shipping back's not the easiest thing. I can't get very close to the river um, literally off just off in front of the box here it probably drops off I don't know it's in excess of six foot um, certainly on the end of the rod the 20 foot rod just in the edge it's sort of 18 19 foot deep so uh, yeah it probably goes out to about 20 foot in the middle it don't slope off much but it's just literally a sheer shelf down here pretty much and um, it's a bit of a challenge to fish it so I've brought a five gram bolo uh, on the 20 foot bolo rod and um, I've just set up a little 10 foot feeder, it's not very wide here, uh, I've got a 20 gram feeder on that and I'm um, just fishing ground bait and maggot in there. Uh, for the bolo rod I just intend to use the bait dropper at this moment in time but if the fish start coming on the feed I may introduce some balls of ground bait, uh, add a bit of tear to some just to get it down uh, but we won't be loose feeding over the top today due to the depth of water. I've seen a few fish topping, uh, I've had half an hour on the feeder so far, I've had four or five fish. Um, so hopefully we'll get a few more out. So remember guys, if you enjoy the videos, give me a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss an episode every time I upload one. Okay, let's get some more fish out. So I'm just fishing a uh, size 22 hook at the moment, not not nine bottom, and single red maggot seems to be producing the fish. Um, I've also got pinkies with me, casters, worms if I thought I required them but all I'm doing is just using a little 20 gram Nisa feeder and uh, it's getting down okay it's holding fine I put a two ounce tip into the bomb rod um, it's certainly plenty strong enough for the flow I wasn't sure how strong the flow would be we had a bit of rain yesterday so I set the rod up decided to uh, stare on the side of caution and put the two ounce tip in. I think I might have got away with something a bit lighter but it's putting a nice little curve in this tip and um, certainly not struggling to see the bite. Ground bait is uh, Dynamite Silver X today. It smells lovely. I think it's uh, quite a spicy mix. It's got a bit of turmeric in there I think. And that's a good bite straight away. There we go. Oh just missed that, that was uh, racking over. You're getting short sharp bites. The setup today is just a tiny little feeder bead uh, and just on a four inch loop basically. And I've got just a couple of loops just to stiffen that off down below, down to a micro swivel. And I've got about a 12 inch hook length on right now. Now if we start missing bites I'll shorten the hook length even more. Just thought I'd start on the feeder just to gauge the response, particularly with the ground bait. Temperature this morning was 5 degrees C, so fairly brisk, but um, it's not too cold. There's a little bit of breeze out here, which is quite icy. So the bait tray is a fairly simple affair it's just casters, floral pinkies, red maggots. And we've got the Silver X ground bait that I'm just using in the feeder at the moment. And uh, I've got some hemp. I forgot my extra bait tubs today, so I've had to leave this in the bag. And I've been feeding via bait dropper on the Bolo rig. So I've only put two bait droppers in and I've not had a look on it yet. So we'll see what's doing on that shortly and uh, may introduce some more bait or maybe ground bait, as I say. That looks like a bite developing. Yeah, fish on. It's a lovely sized little rod this for uh, fishing this river. Ten foot's perfect. It's a nice little roach. Bit of a challenge getting the fish in the keep net. <laughs> Could have done with a bank stick, but I ain't got one of those with me either. 
don't like being sat back from the river so far but I brought the outrigger for the box but even uh, even with the outrigger legs they're six foot long I poked them down the inside here and it just drops off straight away so there's no getting any closer unfortunately so I'm casting about three quarters of the way across the river given the depth I imagine that feed is settling pretty much mid-river as it swings back in the arc towards me. So we're fishing pretty much into the main flow here. Can't really get any closer in this peg to the far bank due to an overhanging tree. But that is one of the reasons that I selected this peg, just for a little bit of cover. Not that there's any foliage left on it now. So the bites aren't coming especially rapid at the moment. Um, but when they do come, they're quite good bites. So I'm just regulating the amount of loose feed going through the feeder at this moment in time. Oh, and that is an absolute hoop over as I was talking that. We've got it. Oh no, we've missed it. So it seems like we've got a few fish in the swim now. Um, as I say, I'm just regulating how much feed I'm putting through. I'm only giving them five or six red maggots in this tiny little 20 gram feeder. It's uh, just a two old feeder. Holding bottom nicely as well. I don't know if I'd need more weight, but it seems plenty heavy enough. It's gonna be difficult to come off this feeder if uh, it starts fishing really well. I would like to get on the bolo and catch him on that. I brought the center pin today. There we go, that's a bite. Ooh. I just pulled out of that one. Just did it a bit too hard. You know, these fish certainly aren't queuing up right now. Um, it was about three minutes in on that chuck. I never had a bite. So I'll give it one more and then I think I may look on the bolo. I'm just going to pop the fluoro pinky on. Just pop a dozen fluoros in the feeder. Just trying to keep them interested. And we'll just give this line a rest and have a look at the bolo. That's what I say, if this, this line comes on strong, then I'd be tempted to feed ground bait on the bolo line, but just want to gauge the response. And I may end up going onto a maggot feeder with this, see if that makes a difference. Just give this 60 more seconds and then we'll give this line a rest wind is getting up a little bit it's upstream so it's not too bad for controlling the float you know it seems to have gone a little bit quiet on this line met with a little bit of resistance on the rod when i picked that up then we've got no bait on right i'm just going to rest it anyway so whether the bait got taken off not entirely sure we'll just have a little look on this bolo and refeed the bolo line if nothing's doing. So it's probably about an hour now since I put the bait in. So we'll just go straight in with a big red. Have a few runs through. Again, size 22 hook on this rig. I'm right on the limit of the depth that I can fish with this rod really. Uh, after that you're getting onto sort of five sections of pool. So it's quite easy on the centre pin. Don't need to cast, you just swing the big lump of weight out. And uh, it takes it in and sets on its merry way. I'm just letting it go through at pace. It's quite steady. So yeah, I did plumb this up. I had a couple of runs through just to make sure I wasn't catching bottom I was, so I just shell it up four or five inches. So it should be about perfect. That is a bite and a fish.
Beautiful. I'll take a bit of bring, bringing back on these. Yeah, they're fairly decent. Fish as well. Nice roach. There we go, ball of cart. Barely even marked that maggot, but it took it well down. We'll put a fresh one on anyway. And have another run through. I've uh, fed hemp, maggot, pinky, and caster through the uh, bait dropper. So I'll give it two reasonable loads. its way again. So it's a big heavy float this but it appears to have a bit more weight when you're fishing this kind of style. It just gives you that bit more control. I don't know whether we were just catching bottom there, we were just sinking under slightly. First run through it went perfect. Looks like we might just be dragging a little bit of bottom. That's a fish. Another one. Don't feel as good as the first. Right on the limit of the rod now. Swing it. So we'll just see how many of these are here, and I may introduce some more bait on the dropper. That's gone, and that's a fish. So just hanging downstream of us. Good positive bites on this. There we go, another little roach. Not the biggest of fish. So I think I'm going to introduce a bit of bait in the dropper, give them another feed. Certainly a few there, and they seem to be pretty much where I'd expect them to be, given the bait droppers that I put in earlier. Okay, so that's the dropper on. I'm just giving them a fairly good helping of hemp, half, half a dropper of hemp, a few casters. Similar maggots. I don't think we'll bother with the pinky right now. No, I'll put a few in. Just keeps them interested. Biggest challenge is trying to get this where you want it. So I'm just going to pop it slightly downstream of me. Swing it out.
pop one more in. Plenty of maggot in this one. Got to be uh, fairly aggressive with how you pop it in. Not the easiest thing to do on a centre pin and a bolo rod. But that's pretty much gone where I wanted it. So we'll get that off and then we'll just stick with topping that up every hour or so I think. We'll have another run through now and then I'll uh, drop back on the feeder if we've made this go a bit quiet by topping it up. Today is as much about me understanding how this river reacts. Bit of a challenge fishing around these reeds and fishing a long rod with a centre pin. There's all sorts of things to go wrong and trying to manoeuvre. But I'm getting a flow. And that is a fish. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. That's a good fish. Ooh. Not sure what this is. Could be a chub this. Feels a decent fish. Stick in line. Lovely control on the pin. Had to give him some line there. Definitely kicking. I don't know if it's a chub, but it could be a heck of a roach. Certainly don't want to lose this. So it's uh, not the easiest thing to uh, bring a fish in on this. But that is doubling that. Got some good pressure on this fish. Right now, I'm not 100% certain what this is. I'm hoping it's a big roach. Heck of a fight. Size 22 up, 0 9 bottom. Giving up easily. Trying to come inside my own bank. Coming up, we might get sight. far off. What is this? It's in the boils. Oh, what a perch that is. That is an absolute bruiser of a perch. Oh my goodness me. Get in there. <laughs> what a fight on the bolo. That's as good as perch as I've got for a long time. Wow. Unbelievable. That fish has got to be knocking a pound and a half plus. That is an absolute corker. Thought it was fighting. <laughs> what a fish. Let's try and get hold of him. What about that, guys? That is an absolute bruiser of a perch. Got to be getting on for a pound and a half, that fish. Just in the corner of the lip there. Size 22. What 
What an absolutely cracking fish. Another bolo. Throwing up a few surprises here. Let's see what we can get this run through. It's going through lovely. Sun's out now. Just warm in the air. Just that little bit, it's nice. I'm probably in the kill zone now. Tripping off there, nice. I'm just going to hold back slightly. Rise that bit, just easing its passage. That's a bite. It's quite well down the swim, that one. Feels like a roach this time. Certainly not the battle uh, we had on the previous fish. Just got to be careful because there's a lot of reeds stuck well, well out into this river. Oh, right at the limit of the rod there. Tried lifting that fish in and uh, dropped it off. Never mind. Let's try again. He's back out into that floor. Seems like the fish are having it. Then bait droppers certainly haven't done it any harm. Tell you what's strange, sometimes this float goes through lovely. Other times it's just catching. Just gotta watch where the uh, where the float tip is coming up to the eye. Just set that reel spinning. And that way it'll just drag the floor out into the floor. It's gone. Pretty much instantly that, as soon as we got on the tracking line. Feels a better fish this as well, so I'm going to take my time with it a little bit longer. Yeah, they all try and come down these reeds on the inside, which is causing me some issues because I can't wind the float any higher now. I've got to stand up to control them. Oh, and that's a that's a good roach. Don't want to lose this one. It's trying to get in the reeds again. Oh, we've got him. Well, another peachy fish. I mean, there's another sort of six ounce roach there. Um, they're definitely starting to uh, turn up a bit now. Is there any need for ground bait? Would seem not. Yeah, I think if I'd been able to fish the pool, I would have quite liked it, but. Given the fact that I can run through on the bolo, it's just allowing me to search that little bit more water. And uh, it might have been slower on the pole. Yeah. Oh, that was a pretty instant bite there. Missed it. I'll just let that run back through. I'm getting a little bit down the peg now. The sun's just reflecting off the uh, water downstream of me. I don't think there's much need to trot much further than we have been doing to be quite honest where the baits have been coming that bait got hammered first time so the bait we had initially has uh, destroyed that maggot so we're feeding well these fish I think I may start upping the feed rate I'm about bothering continuing with the feeder that seems slow by comparison to this. I mean, there's some quality fish down this inside. The last perch and roach we had, fantastic fish. That's gone. A little bit rapid that bite, we missed that one as well. I just noticed somebody's fishing the pole, two pegs down from me. I'm not sure when they arrived. Just gonna hold that back slightly. 
seem to be getting a lot of bites just in that zone where we put them bait droppers in. So the beauty of going in with the dropper, it doesn't spread the bait too far, it gets it down exactly where you want it. There we go, another fish. It's come off. It's just gone a little bit quiet on this line. We'll just have another run through and uh, contemplate putting some more bait on it. Just swap the maggot out. Doesn't look to be anything wrong with that maggot, but uh, you never know. I may even try a caster on this shortly. And even the hemp. Just depends how many how many bites we get coming really. So last run through for now. And then I'll refeed it again. It just be that you're absolutely cleaning this bait up. Certainly think there's plenty of fish there. It's running through probably on the most perfect line now. Not too fast, not too slow. Just inching through. Looked like a bite but missed it. Okay. I think we'll uh, I think we'll just drop back on the feeder for now. Just give them another feed, give it a rest and come back to it. Yeah, they might have even switched on to the caster now. Okay. Certainly feeding by dropper is uh, a safer option than balling it in. We'll have a little look on the feeder again. Put a fairly decent helping of maggots in this time. I think if they're reasonably willing to feed on the float line then it should be the same on the feeder line to be honest. Um, they maybe just want more maggot throwing at them. So nothing on the feed of that chuck. Just wonder whether uh, they don't want it static or whether to try the maggot feeder. Just have a couple of slings anyway, keep the swim going. We well, definitely seems to have gone a bit quiet on the feeder line. <coughs> Tempting a bite there. With one more throw on it. Come back in on the bolo. Maybe with the sun coming up, it's uh, put them off wanting a static bait. It pays just to have a few chucks on it just to keep the line going. Also give the bolo a little rest. Don't have to rest these things for long, but just while that bait went in. Right, well the ground bait feeder seems to have switched right off. That maggot's slightly marked on the end, so there are a few fish over there. But Okay, I'll just have one more chuck on it. Then we'll get back on the bolo. 
Folks will try the pinky. So, give it three minutes. Well, that looked like a rattle straight away there. I think something took that on the way down. The tip was rattling back up as it feed had settled. That pinky might be bust already. I'll bring that back. Just have a look at it. No, it's unmarked. So, I think we'll give that a rest for the time being. I think maybe they've switched off static bait. Hopefully they haven't switched off completely. So we'll soon see. See if something's waiting for us on this line. That's it. We're in lovely. Yeah, fish. Not a big one. But nice enough, we'll net him. Couple of ounce roach. Definitely seeing a few fish sort of top under that tree on the far bank though now. So I think there are some fish there. Whether they've come off bottom. Maybe that's the problem with the feeder. That's a bite really quickly there on the bollow. I was a bit slack with that. A bit of a fast bite, do with my sunglasses now. It's low winter sun. So, a little trip back to the van and got my sunglasses because the winter sun's right in my face now. But it's lovely. So, back on the bolo. This low sun's certainly blinding. It's difficult to see with the sunglasses on, it's difficult to see with them off. Looks like the whole swim's switched off right now. I don't know whether this bright sunshine's just putting them off a bit. There we go. Just needed a better trot through. Just out into that main flow a little bit more. That's another roach. Only a small one. I'll try and track the same line again. I may put another dropper on this and just tempt another bite. Try not to look at that sun, it just blinds you instantly. It's so bright. Hmm. The bites are uh, getting a little bit fewer and further between now. Right, I've just changed my reel setup back onto the close face. I was getting in a bit of a world of pain with the centre pin. Um, just finding it difficult to control on the bolo. Never tried it actually with a 20 foot rod before and I probably won't try it again. 
Not in a peg like this, anyway. She's definitely making life a lot easier. Unfortunately, seems like the bites have gone. Right, I think we'll have to bait drop of this. Put a bit more bait on it. See if we can bring something back in the swim. Um, and we'll go and have a look on the feeder for a bit. A little nosy. We don't get anything going across. Might just be worth trying to drop the bomb down the inside over the uh, bolo line. All just seems like it's going a bit quiet now. Well, nothing on the feeder. Seen a roach or a fish top upstream of me. Wonder if they've come off bottom a bit, but it's not something I want to try and employ in this depth of water. I'm trying to find a depth that they're feeding at. Really, you just need to stick to fishing around the deck. Just lift it in those last few layers. Might be worth just lifting the olivet up a little bit if we don't get a bite this run through. Or the next couple of runs through. Feeder just seems totally futile now. There's an area right where I'm going through now where I just can't see because I'm completely blind to the float. I think I had a bite then but I'm trying to get a bite before I reach that area of really white water. It's probably exactly where I was catching now. Hopefully the sun will move round a little bit more and we'll be able to see what's going on shortly. Got through it this time. Yes, fish. Just held that back quite hard then. Only a little one. I think that's a dace. Yeah. Small days. I think we'll just try and uh, move this olivet up a little bit. Six inches or so. Okay, made a couple of adjustments to the rig. Just move the weight slightly further up the line. See if when we hold back that just allows it to rise up in the water column a bit more, whether that will allow us to tempt a bite. Reluctant to put any more feed in now. Just don't seem to re be responding to it anymore. And that's a fish down at the bottom of the run. Again, small fish, not what we're looking for, just a gudgeon. I'm not sure where the roach have gone. I think the bright conditions have just put them off. Yeah, fish. Oh, better fish down at the bottom end. I wonder if they just drop down a bit. Could be a perch this. Going well. Feels perch like. 
not as big as the first one we hooked, but definitely feels more like a perch the way it's going. It's not a perch, it's a good roach. Coming for the inside bank again. I'm right at the top of the rod here, so I have to stand up. And there's a roach. Sixes and sevens. We've got him. Well, he went really well, that fish. Beautiful roach. So he's only just lip hooked. Took that well down the run. Another lovely winter roach. Still just going to hold off from putting any feed in because caught that well down the run, that fish. Thought there'd have been some sat a bit higher up over the feed, the bait droppers that we put in earlier. Whether they're just pushed downstream with it or we're just having to fish for a bite at a time now, I'm not sure. Well, that looked like a bite then. My maggot's not getting marked. Right, I'm going to try a pinky on the trot down here now. What's going on with my glasses? Just don't think there's enough light to be able to see out of them properly. It's just low, low light. Yeah, another fish. Again, well down the run. Another little dace. So that one on the pinky. I think I'm just going to drop down to 08 now. Put a little bit less strength on this uh, line. Maybe the lower diameter will just help. Tempt another bite or two. Don't want to go too low. Not when there's big perch and chub about. So I guess the question now is do we feed anything else in or not? It's difficult to tempt fish back upstream if you don't put anything in. But then, the last few fish we've had have been well down the run. So I would have thought the hemp would have drawn any better roach up if we were going to get one. So I think right now I'm going to hold off feeding anything in and just keep trotting down. I'm barely fed anything at all, really. I've still got probably the best part of the full pint of maggots. Half of pinkies and half of gasters. I've just not used anything other than hemp, really. Um, and the few bits that we put in the bait dropper and odd tiny bits in the ground bait feeder. I've not even used a quarter of a bag of ground bait through the feeder. So, in again. I've just made the hook length up to 10 inches now, so I'm actually probably about 2 inches deeper than I was previously. Yeah, well down the run again, and it was the faintest of bites to start with, so I held the float down, and then just dipped it the last bit. There's another tiny little dace. So, I think, I think I am going to feed it. Because if all I'm catching down there really is this, it's a bit poor. Um, so I'm just going to give it a proper good helping of maggots and pinkies. No hemp this time. This might just see us out. One big bait dropper. Right, we'll just rest that line again. Have a little look back on the feeder. Half a dozen slings on the feeder. If we don't do anything now, I think the feeder's finished. Probably got about an hour and a half left, maximum. Right, I really don't think that far line's fishing at all. So I'm uh, taking the ground bait feeder off and I'm just popping a maggot feeder on. Uh, little black cap. I'm just going to throw it sort of mid-river. 
20 gram again. Sun's gone down now and uh, temperature's really dropped. So I'm just going out mid river. That should swing in towards us. Come roughly on this line that we have been fishing on the bolo. Looks to be a lot of fish moving down the inside uh, into these reeds. Probably perch chasing. I'll just give it a couple of minutes on this. See if anything develops. I really don't think the feed is fishing. So I'm not, not going to give that any more time. We'll pack that away. Just fish the session out on the bolo. Okay, so we'll finish the session on the bolo. Um, fortunately now, the sun's gone pretty much, it's clouded over. Give it a good couple of feeds before that little look on the feeder rod and packing that away. So I'm certainly not going to feed anything else now. I'm just going to see if anything's waiting for us. What we can take out. Quite a big temperature drop now the sun's gone but um, so much easier to see to fish. Fish. Bottom of the run again. Unfortunately, the sun's come out in the time it took me to trot down there, and it's blinding me again. And that's a roach this time on the pinky. Problem I've got with this low sun is that one area. just in between two sort of patches of light where I can actually see what's going on. And that's another gudgeon. Fish on. Another roach. Bonny little fish. Another fish. All these fish come in well down the run now and on the inside in the slow water. running down the slow trot, holding back, usually as I let it go, that's when the bite comes. The downside is they tend to be coming in an area, I can't really see the float. Yes, good bite that one. It's a dace. Probably the best dace of the day. Not a bad little fish. Another gudgeon. That's actually a tiny little tommy rough. Contender for the smallest one of the year. <laughs> He's cute. Let's 
so the stamp fish have disappeared. I'm not sure we ever really got up to stamp, but um, we had the odd better fish this morning. The last couple of hours have been a bit more of a struggle. I think maybe the river just switched off around midday for some reason when you'd expect it to be at its best in winter. I think probably the bright sunshine hasn't helped today. There was a bite just holding back there. Didn't quite take it properly. Probably another tiny fish. I'm getting a few bites a little bit higher at the swim now. That was a good bite at the bottom end of the run there. And a half decent fish on. Just trotted inside. Not an opportune moment for my camera to dive. Yeah, so another cracking roach, just down at the bottom of the run there. Lovely fish. Probably a good six ounces. So they're taking a lot of these really quite close in. They're hanging out of the main flow and in the slow water. I'm probably just down to my last 20 minutes now. See if we can get a few more roach out. And then we'll call it a day. The little dace. No bite on the last couple of runs through on the red maggot. So we'll pop a pinky on again. And I think we're nearly done. There we go. Fish on the pinky. Well down the run again. The little Tommy. It's two minutes to three, so it's time to go. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the episode, guys. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. Give me a thumbs up and hit that notification bell so you don't miss an episode every time I upload one. And leave me a comment down below. Um, right, I'm going to get these fish out, so we'll have a look, see what we've had. It's not been the most prolific of days, but it is winter fishing. It is the day went, and it's a moody river at the best of times. So we'll call it a day, and. Uh, yeah, let's see what we've had. Right, it is absolutely lethal down here. Not an amazing net. Um, we've had a few nice fish nonetheless. And that perch was an absolute Brucey bonus. So, yeah, not the best of days, but fairly pleased. Some nice little roach in there. Right, let's get him back.